Hello, today we're going to read chapter 62, Down and Out. By 1932, at least 12 million people were out of work. That was one in four of all the Americans who normally would work. America had had depressions before. They were supposed to be a kind of self-regulating part of capitalism. All the early depressions had something in common. It was the poorest workers who were hurt. They lost their jobs. They went hungry. The wealthy in the middle class suffered only slightly. The Great Depression, which is what it came to be called, was different. It hurt more people, rich and poor, than any previous depression. And it went on and on and on. To begin, the census of 1920 had shown that for the first time, more than half of the nation was urban. Cities in the 1920s were, were small by today's measures. Still, they were a big change for people used to farm life. This was the first major urban depression. City people have a terrible time without jobs or income. Farmers don't have an easy time of it either, but at least they can usually feed themselves. America's farmers, as you remember, had not done well in the 20s. They didn't prosper with the rest of the nation. Crop prices stayed low, so the farmer's income was low too. In 1929, most farms still didn't have electricity or indoor toilets. During the 30s, things got worse. The price of wheat and other grains dropped so low that it was sometimes below what it cost to grow it. Dairy farmers dumped thousands of gallons of milk onto the land to protest the low price of milk. Other farmers destroyed their own crops. All this waste was happening at a time when city children were hungry. Clearly, something was terribly wrong with our economic system. Many bankers, brokers, and investors had been wowed and irresponsible in the 20s. That irresponsibility caused great hardship in the decade that followed. The American farmer had been irresponsible for generations. Mostly, he hadn't known better, although he should have. European farmers had been practicing crop rotation for over a century. But, beginning in Jamestown, American farmers had abused land. Farmers used up the fertile land and moved on. They cut down trees and cut up the sod. It didn't have to happen. With careful farming, land can be preserved and enriched. For generations, however, there had seemed to be so much land that few people in America worried. They weren't prepared for nature's tricks for the droughts and windstorms that came, dried up the land and turned it to desert. Soil, good, rich topsoil became dust. Much of the Great Plains just blew away. It was so bad that sailors at sea 20 miles off the Atlantic coast swept Oklahoma dust from the decks of their ships for drought-stricken farmers, there was nothing to do but leave the land, head for a city, and hope to find a job. But there were no jobs to be found in the cities. City people were moving in with relatives on family farms. But many people had no relatives able to take them in and no place to go. Some built shacks out of old boxes and boards on some land near a garbage dump. Hundreds were soon camped in such unhealthy places all over the nation. People called these shanty towns Hoovervilles after the president, who says he is trying hard to solve the problems of the homeless and the hungry. But nothing he does seems to help. By 1933, a million people in America are living in Hoovervilles. Okay, I'm going to come back to these captions because they are important. 
So a depression is a time of decline in business activity. Uh, it is accompanied by falling prices and high unemployment. So the Great Depression was a time of severe decline in business activity. Down here it shows just some workers waiting in line to get some free coffee and donuts. Here we see this chart here, you notice 1929, it's year by year. We're watching the rate of unemployment skyrocket. Remember they said one in every four, 25% of people that were previously employed are now out of work. To abuse means to hurt or to treat carelessly. They were referring to how farmers treated their land. Um, this led to the Dust Bowl days, which we're going to read about here. So as they describe those poor farming methods that turned the Great Plains to deserts, they are referring to the Dust Bowl days. And the Dust Bowl is the name given to the region that was devastated by drought during the Great Depression years. It went from western Arkansas to Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandles to New Mexico, Kansas, and Colorado, and into Missouri. That area has little rainfall, light soil, and high winds. During World War I, when grain prices were high, farmers had plowed up thousands of acres of grassland to plant wheat. When thousands, or when drought struck, from 1934 to 1937, the soil lacked a grassy root system to hold it. Winds picked up the topsoil and turned it into black blizzards. Cattle choked and people fled. The government formed the Soil Conservation Service in 1935 to teach farmers to terrace the land to hold rainwater and plant trees and grass to anchor the soil. Artists and writers such as Dorothea Lang, John Steinbeck, and Woody Guthrie photographed, wrote, and sang of the tragedy. A dust storm swirls around a farmer and his sons as they try to make their way to shelter. So this was very serious. Here is that area of the Dust Bowl, 1935 to 1940. So remember 1929 is when that stock market crashed. So this was happening at the peak of that depression. All right, thanks for listening.